Uh, my name is Dr. Dan Palermo. I work in the Department of Civil Engineering at York University, and I'm a professor of structural engineering. So I did uh, all my education at the University of Toronto in their Department of Civil Engineering, my bachelor, master's, and PhD. What got me into civil engineering, I think going back, when I look back now, I this is a project that I participated in when I was in grade 11 physics in high school. And we were given the task to build something out of toothpicks and it shouldn't have been larger than the size of a shoebox. Uh, then we ended up loading it up with weights and we got up to about 500 pounds and it didn't collapse. So looking back, I think this is one of the things that sort of triggered an interest in engineering and specifically civil engineering. My area of research, again, it's focused around uh, reinforced concrete structures for the most part. Uh, specifically, we are looking at how do you repair and re retrofit concrete structures. Essentially what we do is we go into our building codes. Uh, we look at the building codes from the 60s and 70s. Uh, we design structures according to what we understood at the time. Uh, then we test them and we try to understand what the deficiencies are. And once we know that, then we come up with different types of retrofit techniques we retrofit the structure or the wall, let's say as an example, and then we further test it. And from this, we're able to gather a lot of information. We can physically see what happens to the building or to the structure. At the same time, we gather a lot of data, which helps us come up with analytical tools. So what we have in our structures lab here at, at York, it's a fairly state-of-the-art building. We have an L-shaped reaction wall, six meters high and approximately four meters by four meters. That reaction wall, the main intent of it is for us to be able to do our lateral testing. So what you would see there and under any situation is we would have what we call hydraulic actuators that essentially impose the forces on the structures that we end up building. We have control over it, whether it's a force control or a displacement control. Essentially, we send a signal to this actuator that then what it does is it will impose a certain force or a certain displacement on any element we're looking to test. Uh, one application we are looking at right now, uh, here's a bar. Uh, this is what we call a shape memory alloy. It is essentially nickel titanium. The nice thing about this type of a material is that if you pull on it, and then you let go, it goes back to its original position. So we're looking at this type of, a, let's say, material for new construction and also how we can use this as a retrofitting material to upgrade existing structures. If, if you have a, a frame that looks like this, and as, you, as the frame moves over from lateral loading, it would do something like this, and it would go back and forth like that. So you can see how it's deformed. And what we're trying to do is that you're putting a brace on the diagonal. So in this position, you can see the brace has to become longer. So it's in tension. And if we have a brace in the other direction, that becomes shorter and then it becomes compressed and you go back and forth on it, right? So what's happening is that we are taking some of the earthquake force away from the frame and putting it into the brace. If you look at our infrastructure, right, we are at a time now where we have a lot of aging infrastructure, whether you're looking at our roads, bridges, buildings, uh, water infrastructure, this falls under the profession of civil engineering. So it's important for us to continuously train civil engineers that can deal with this. Climate change, uh, if we're looking at that, that's going to have a large impact on various infrastructure. We're already seeing it today globally, the effects that it will have. So it's very important to continuously train civil engineers. I think it's an exciting time for civil engineers because we're looking at different problems. It provides a lot of opportunities for people. There's a lot of challenges. And I think moving forward, we have to really invest in civil engineering to be able to tackle all these problems.